Britain today, people aged over 65 now outnumber the under 16s for the first time. And with an increasing ageing population, the sheltered housing market has become big business. More and more of us are having to consider the costs of assisted living when planning for our own old age. But one cost you probably won't be counting on is one that has to be paid when you leave or when you die. Paul de Neumann was worried about how his brother was coping as he got older. John suffered from learning difficulties and Paul felt he'd be better off living close by. Well, John worked as a chef all his working life in, in the Grand Hotel in Leicester. While he was in Leicester, I didn't see so very much of him because we were a long way away. I'd see him at Christmas and see him perhaps twice a year. Uh, well, as my other mother died, uh, it seemed much more sensible to move him to near here. The brothers found a flat in a nearby sheltered housing complex, just a short distance from Paul's house. At that stage, I saw a lot more of him. Then it was once a week um, to a local pub and um, probably a, a bigger event once a month. And probably more importantly, three or four days in the week, just popping in and just doing bits and pieces and checking things out. The site is run by Peveril, a company that has 1,500 separate developments across the UK, comprising of 65,000 homes. While he was able to move around and while he could walk to the shops, which are just along the road here, uh, it worked very well indeed. But John's health deteriorated and he died soon after. In the midst of his grief, Paul was left with the miserable job of clearing away John's possessions in order to sell the property. We put that flat on the market, uh, and they're, they're actually very hard to sell because there's sort of a glut of them, really. Um, did eventually uh, get a sale organised, and at, at that point, or just before it, we discovered that we had to pay a couple of fees on addition to all the normal costs. Paul should have spotted these fees when he bought the flat, as they were included in his legal documents. They consisted of a £1,500 payment into the site's contingency pot and another £1,500 to be paid to the leaseholder, Fairhold Homes, as an exit fee, essentially a 1% charge that's payable whenever the property changes hands. And this, for Paul, was the problem. As far as I'm concerned, Peveril do nothing to earn this, this fee, which they just money just pops into the pot as people move or, and usually die. Exit fees are not uncommon in the retirement home sector, and they're not without controversy either. They're currently the subject of an Office of Fair Trading investigation. The OFT say they're concerned about the contract terms used by 26 retirement home firms in the UK, which they believe may be in breach of the unfair terms in consumer contracts regulations. Peveril and Fairhold Homes have told us they disagree with the OFT's position and that they intend to contest it vigorously. Peveril said buyers should always get independent legal advice on the terms of the lease, as the very nature of property transactions is complex and requires the involvement of a solicitor. They told us that information on exit fees is brought to the attention of purchasers right from the start of the process. It's not yet known when the OFT will publish their findings, as they say there are lots of complex legal and economic arguments to consider. Until then, people like Paul will have to keep paying. Well, as you've just heard, this is an issue that's currently under investigation. But until the OFT makes a ruling, what do you need to look out for if you or a relative is faced with a complex contract? Joe Oldman from Age UK has some valuable advice. Well, at the moment, there's something like 200,000 uh, people living in retirement housing. And for many people, it's a really positive move. It allows people to remain independent. People don't have to worry about things like maintenance and gardening. And it also means that if people need a little bit of extra support, then they have access to that as well. The problem at the moment is that more and more people are finding increases in charges, in bills, and therefore any excessive increase in service charges is going to hit people much harder. And, and that's the problem, that a lot of these charges are not predictable and people can't plan ahead for them.
we get uh, several hundred people who come to us with uh, disputes about service charges. Um, some of those include people who are concerned about transfer fees. We're concerned that in some situations, landlords and managing agents are actually charging excessive administrative fees on resale of property up to 20-25%. And we think that's a, that's a problem, that, that really that charge is difficult to justify. Anybody thinking about buying a retirement property, it's really important they get good legal advice and go to, to, to a solicitor who knows about leasehold contracts. For example, whether there are any age restrictions uh, placed on that, what the terms are for, for resale, um, but also things like uh, how service charges operate and what the arrangements are for insurance. Also things like whether there's a, 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 pet, a policy on pet ownership. For people seeking uh, uh, further advice, um, it's a good idea to either talk to your local Age UK or your Citizens Advice Bureau, but also there are agencies like the Elderly Accommodation Council who provide a wealth of information on the range and type of retirement housing that's available.